Hi again, my name is Sifi Dean. I'm your science teacher for this course. And today we're gonna talk about the system that responsible for breathing. And I have a question for you as usual at the beginning before we get started. Why it's respiratory system? Why it's not breathing system? Why we call this system that responsible for breathing respiratory? Or in the British accent, we say respiratory system. Why don't we say breathing system? I'm gonna answer this question within the lesson, but let's get started. These are the organs of our respiratory system that help us to breathe and respire. We have a slightly difference between breathing and respiration. I'm gonna answer this question at the end. This is the first organ in our respiratory system. The nose, which can be used to take your breath, to take the air from the external environment to inside your body, just like this. Also, you can breathe through the mouth, so you can take the air from here or here. But which one is better? Let's find out. Definitely the nose. Then the air moves from the nose inside the nasal cavity, the spaces inside the nose here, and move to the pharynx. We were talking about the pharynx in the previous lesson when we were talking about the digestive system. The pharynx has inside two tubes. The first tube is the esophagus, the second one is the trachea. The esophagus for food, but the trachea for air. So the air will pass through the pharynx to go to that trachea. But before the trachea, we have larynx, that's the voice box. We can speak and make voices through the larynx. Then the air moves to the trachea, which is air tube. Here the trachea is starting from this point and ends in this point. Why? Because actually we have two lungs. One in is in the left side, the other one is in the right side. Which one of them should take the air? Both. So the trachea is just one tube. How to solve this problem? We can add here the bronchi. Again, bronchi. The bronchi is the two ways at the end of the trachea. Two tubes at the end of the trachea to take the air in the two lungs. And they are divided into smaller tubes inside the two lungs known as bronchioles. Bronchioles. And the bronchioles are dividing inside the two lungs, are divided inside the two lungs into little sacs. At the end, the air sacs at the end, the most important part in our lesson, the alveoli. The alveoli are the dots or the circles that you see at the end of each bronchial. So, nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and the, bronchi, the bronchi are dividing inside the two lungs, are divided into smaller tubes known as bronchioles, very small tubes. And they ended with the alveoli. Why the air should pass from the nose till the end here? Let's find out. That's the answer of the first question. Why the nose is better than mouth in breathing? Because the nose has filter inside. The hair inside the nose and the mucus, the liquid inside the nose, it filters the air from the dust and microbes the tiny particles and so on. It makes the air pure for you. This is the trachea, the air tube that comes after the pharynx. Come, I need to show you something. When the air moves to the trachea and then enters the bronchi, take a look here to understand what is happening. It moves through the trachea and then the bronchi, then the bronchioles, the small tubes at the end, and reaches finally the alveoli. These are the alveoli, the little sacs at the end. What is happening over there? Let's discover. That's the shape of the alveoli. Take a look here. It looks like little air sacs grab of the air, collect the air, and it's surrounded by blood vessels. 
the blood vessels that found here for main purpose for the most important thing the function of the respiratory system when the air goes to the alveoli you can find here the air is coming with different gases it has different gases only oxygen can pass through the alveoli to the blood I guess now you understand why the alveoli is surrounded by blood vessels so the blood can take the oxygen why especially the blood because the blood can distribute it all over body organs the blood takes the oxygen from the air here and move around to give it to rest of organs as you can see here the white balls are moving from the alveoli inside the bloodstream they move with each other but there is something don't forget there is a gas must come out which is carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide is already coming with the blood and it leaves the blood to be expelled out so, so oxygen goes in and carbon dioxide goes out this is what is happening in the alveoli gas exchanging the blood takes oxygen and gives out carbon dioxide where does it go back alveoli bronchioles bronchi trachea pharynx nose and outside the body so as you can see the respiration is divided into two steps the first step is inhalation what does it mean inhalation inhalation means to breathe in where the oxygen is going to the nose then the pharynx trachea bronchi bronchioles alveoli and then to the blood this is inhalation the second part is exhalation where the carbon dioxide moves from the blood to the alveoli then bronchioles back to bronchi trachea pharynx nose outside so inhalation breathe in exhalation breathe out in inhalation our respiratory system takes the air in exhalation our respiratory system gives out air but the air here that we take we take oxygen from it the air that exit here exit with carbon dioxide here is the motion of your respiratory system during both the most special thing here is the movement of the diaphragm the diaphragm in inhalation moves down and in exhalation moves up give reason why the diaphragm moves down in inhalation and up in exhalation is this for purpose definitely yes when you take your breath your respiratory system increases in size it goes larger so if the diaphragm stuck to the two lungs the two lungs will not be bigger they will not take the air so the diaphragm moves down to give the two lungs a space to be bigger after this the diaphragm moves up again to push the two lungs upward to expel out the carbon dioxide this is why the diaphragm moves down and up down in inhalation up in exhalation i need to tell you a secret keep it in mind don't forget in inhalation it has n the air goes in the diaphragm moves down and with n and it contracts means go down here in exhalation ex Inhalation, so the air exit from the body so the diaphragm moves up to let the air exit outside do you like the secret that's a summary about inhalation and exhalation in inhalation the oxygen travels in the respiratory system becomes larger in size the diaphragm moves up in exhalation the carbon dioxide goes out our respiratory system turn into smaller size again and the diaphragm moves up one more time in inhalation the diaphragm moves downward contracts 
to let the air fill the two lungs and be bigger and oxygen travels in in exhalation the diaphragm moves up to push the air carbon dioxide outside the lungs and now would you like to give me some advices to keep my respiratory system healthy you need to stop smoking if you are already a smoker you have to avoid smoking avoid pollution eat vegetables and fruits rich in vitamin c this is really helpful to keep our respiratory system healthy practice sports it makes all the body healthy take a look here have you ever wondered how do they breathe water contains oxygen dissolved in it Depending on temperature and other factors, the, the level fish. of dissolved oxygen in water is about 4 to 15 milligrams per liter. Have you ever wondered how fish breathe underwater? How do they take the oxygen? Yes, you are right. They have gills. They have gills in the both sides of the body to take oxygen, but not from the air, from the water. And also they produce carbon dioxide, but also in water. So they are like us in somehow in taking the oxygen and giving out the carbon dioxide. But the medium is different. The medium is not air. The medium here is water. This is another secret. The amphibians, the family of the frogs, toads, animals such as them. They breathe through skin. They have moistened skin, like watery skin, to take the oxygen in and the carbon dioxide out. So, in somehow, also they take oxygen and give out carbon dioxide in breathing. The last part of this lesson is represented in a comparison. Some changes happen in the environment, maybe they affect our respiratory system, such as pollution, environmental changes. The first type some ecosystem changes, environmental changes, caused by nature itself. Human cannot make them, such as rain, such as thunder, such as changing temperature. These are ecosystem changes by nature, caused by nature itself. On the other hand, we can find changes are happening by human, such as pollution, such as uh, cutting down forests, such as the water pollution, these are changes might be affecting our respiratory and our body in a bad way. And somehow you can find the changes that are happening in our ecosystem by nature are useful, but the bad effects of the pollution are harmful. So give human an advice in the comment below. Don't forget to make like if you like the video. 24 questions are waiting to be solved by you. Go ahead. In inhalation, the diaphragm moves and relaxes. Exhalation. Exhalation, exit. So the diaphragm moves. I guess so. Up. Right answer. <laughs> You have gifts. We're gonna help you in your mission with the upcoming 23 questions here and your competition with the other classmates. Don't forget to like the video, leave your question in the comment below, make subscribe if you didn't make yet and make sure if you ask me to create a game for you, for your own listen, for your favorite listen, I can do it. Just tell me down. Goodbye. See you.